Hi friends, you should be keeping your clothes for longer. Two years ago, I decided to replace my leather jacket, or rather the PVC jacket I'd bought right as I graduated college that became a part of me, that I was replacing at first every year and then every few months with every listing of the same jacket I could find on Poshmark or eBay because they all, every unit from that production run, were starting to flake away into dust. I decided it was time to buy real leather because at least that I could buy one time and have it last me the rest of my life. I swallowed hard as they rang up the nearly $400 coat, remember, for life, and then I wore it home, even though it was already getting a little too warm in the spring. Somewhere along my walk, I started sweating. So I did what I'd done with plenty of jackets, sweaters, crew necks in my years, and I tied it around my waist, promptly tearing a two inch hole on the shoulder of my brand new jacket. There have been many fixes since. I stitched it up, which lasted for a long time, but the threads have now worn out and started breaking. So a couple of months ago, I put some safety pins in it. Yes, I am very punk, thanks for noticing, but the rip is now starting to spread, so it's time to cover it all up with a patch. I got this one with a really strong adhesive backing rather than a sew-on patch because I actually looked up how to repair leather this time that it's really hard to sew leather at home without causing more damage, so I'm just gonna peel off the backing and stick it on. Now my jacket is repaired and it has even more character and I can continue to wear it as promised forever. You know, I was sad to lose my original vegan slash plastic leather jacket because it felt like it was such a part of my identity. But with this jacket in like 25 years, I'll probably have a sleeve full of cool patches with stories behind them and no one else in the world will have anything like it. Each year it'll just get even more a part of me. I've been trying to keep the things that I own longer and buy new things less often. Sure, it's corporations and not individuals that are producing the bulk of the waste and emissions that are causing climate change, but as Aja Barber describes in her book Consumed about the fast fashion industry, these corporations don't exist in a vacuum. They sell things because people buy them, and then we throw them out. Americans landfill like 11 million tons of textiles per year, and that includes all of the worn out fast fashion or charity run t-shirts that you dump on a Goodwill thinking someone else will wanna use them. They won't. So we're allowed to withdraw our participation if for no other reason than to close the gap between our values and our actions. I wanna keep my things longer and love my things more. And one of the ways that I've been doing that is by mending them. Here is a favorite sweater of mine that in the winter I wear probably three days a week. Taylor starter pack is just black jeans, a black sweater, black boots, and the most beat up crusty Audio Technica headphones you can find. These aren't totally worn out yet, but I am going to patch the elbows because they're getting a little thin. And if I do them now before there's an actual hole in them, then this iron on patch is gonna stick better. I got these patches on Etsy and they have an iron on backing. So you just need to place them and apply heat. Now I didn't have an iron, so I tried to use the bottom of a hot tea kettle. Don't do this, it won't work. Then I was annoyed at the process and embarrassed of my own foolishness, so I went to Target and I bought a new iron. I don't recommend this either. If you don't have an iron, you can probably borrow one or find one secondhand super easily. We're trying not to buy new things here. So learn from my mistake and don't set yourself up for failure because we know that marketing and advertising are all about pushing us to an emotional place from which we become desperate to spend, desperate to cool down those hot emotions. In this case, I pushed myself to that place by trying to do this fast enough to film a video. Take your time, practice on things that you're less emotionally attached to before you try to mend something really special. You're in no rush. In learning to mend over the past two or three years, I've learned that so much that we've been taught to believe is worthless or garbage is actually fixable. It's such a disrespect to the things in your care to toss them out at the first sign of wear. And things that belong to us are meant to be lived with and adjusted and changed as much as we do. And I'm not perfect about this. I like the thrill of new stuff just as much as the next person. But I've also started to develop a better eye for when things are weakening and wearing out. Here's a pair of jeans that's pretty new. I bought them in December when on the way to the airport, one of the two pairs of pants I was bringing on my month long trip ripped a hole in the crotch. I didn't have time to mend them then, so I bought new ones and figured I'd mend that pair later. Because wearing out pants is one of my biggest clothing problems. Like, I'm a girl whose thighs rub together and I also have to walk five miles a day to keep my brain from wilting. I wanted to see if there's anything I could do to slow down the wear and tear and make my new jeans last longer. I read on one of the mending Instagram accounts that I follow that using iron-on patches on the inside of your new pants helps reinforce the fabric so it doesn't rip as easily. So that's what I'm doing now with a 
proper iron this time. I don't know how much it'll extend the life of my pants, but for all of the $3 I spent on patches, I think it's worth a shot. It's so much easier to take care of things before the damage is done, to maintain them before the fabric is already worn through, before people are ready to toss it out entirely. Our clothes, like our systems, like our relationships, like our communities, need our proactive attention and maintenance if we intend to keep them for a long time. Because they are so precious and take so much to manufacture, and despite the endless options that we may see on offer, they're so difficult to replace. Not anything on this earth is really disposable, so we all need to learn how to mend. In comments, please tell me stories about the things that you have mended, literal or metaphorical. If you're looking to learn how to do literal mending, I will link some of the books and accounts and resources that I've been using to learn. And finally, this video was brought to you by the Radish Collective, my community of Patreon supporters. If you join them before the end of February, I will send you a postcard in the mail to say thanks, and you will help me make more videos just like this one. See you soon. Bye.